Hi everyone, my name is Shayla Sasek and I'm here in Arizona at the Chandler Xeriscape Demonstration Garden. And I'm going to educate you on the coolest, most cost-effective and environmentally friendly way to landscape your yard. Have you ever heard of landscaping? Mm, probably not. The word xeriscape by definition comes from the Greek word xeros, meaning dry, and the term xeriscape literally means dry landscape. Xeriscaping is landscaping designed specifically for areas that are susceptible to drought and places where water conservation is practiced. Xeriscaping is essential to places like Arizona where it is very hot and dry. Here it only rains about eight to nine inches per year so those high maintenance plants don't stand a chance. When people think of Arizona, they think rocks, cactuses, straggly plants, just ugly, ugly stuff. However, if you xeriscape your area using the seven principles I provide, you can have an absolutely lush garden in almost any style. Xeriscaping also has several positive effects for the environment as well. A big plus is that it saves our planet's precious drinkable water that is also essential for us humans to survive. Drinking water is becoming more expensive and cities are starting to put restrictions on outdoor irrigation systems to conserve water. Not to mention a noticeable reduction in your water bill, which is always a plus for me. High five! Some cities like Chandler, Arizona, where I am now, even offer a rebate of up to $3,000 if you replace your grass with native desert plants. Your garden or yard can be drought tolerant even if your water is completely restricted while still having the beautiful luscious lawn you've always dreamed of. When you're willing to look beyond a monoculture of grass, new possibilities appear like gorgeous flowers, ornamental stone, and stunning plant groupings that offer color all year long. Yes, even in the desert. As I mentioned earlier, I will show you and explain how to plant your own xeriscape garden by using the seven principles. Here we go. The first step is planning and designing. Look at what you currently have and plan what you want to have. I am just showing you the steps through this glass container to make it easier for you to see the layers in the process but your area will most likely be much bigger than this. The fun part is choosing the plants you want to have. There are many books you can order from the library or just simply do some research online on desert plants and pick your favorite. Here, I have an aloe vera plant. This plant loves the sun and loves to be hot, which makes it easy to grow in a desert. Aloe is also a plant you can use for your skin, hair, and even weight loss. You have to plan and design the placement of your plants. It is, a, it is important to group plants together by their water requirements. On a side note, you can use little flags or sticks to insert into the soil with the plant names on it to help you plan everything out. Now, the second step is amending your soil. Remove all of the rocks from the top of the dirt and till, till and cultivate the dirt about four inches deep. Replace the dirt with soil like I have here. I'm using Nature's Care Organic Soil. Uh, you can replace it with dirt or aged manure. You can buy bags of soil like this one. This one was like $5. Uh, just pour it over the dirt. Then you dig a hole into the plant like so, or into the dirt. Okay. Take your plant and break up the bottom and lightly push it into the hole you made for the plant. The third principle 
we're already on the third one, is to have efficient irrigation, or in other words, an efficient watering system. Like I previously said, it is important to group together plants that have similar water requirements. Fourthly, plant the appropriate flowers for your environment. Don't plant a Madonna lily, which is a very high maintenance plant in a drought prone area. It won't last. There is a huge variety of flowers and plants to choose from of all different shapes and sizes and colors that can sustain in dry conditions. The fifth principle is mulch. Mulch keeps plants cool, prevents soil from crusting, minimizes evaporation, and minimizes weed growth. I am going to use some rocks, which you can also use instead of mulch. Uh, and you can just put this around your plant, but don't get it too close so the plant can have some initial water and brush off anything that's touching the leaves. Uh, turf alternatives is the sixth principle. Take an area of grass that has already been brown or dehydrated, no matter how much you watered it, and turn it into a low water use garden. The last and seventh principle is maintenance, and it's the most important. High water requirement plants can be watered every two to four days, Medium requirement plants can be watered between every 5 to 14 days. And finally, plants that require low water, like this aloe vera, can be watered during dry spells. There you have it, folks! With all this information you just learned, you can be the coolest kid on the block by xeriscaping your lawn. By going native and selecting plants that grow in your area naturally, you can save money, 